Welcome back. There are a few questions on our mind. Will the election be postponed where there is a preponderance of violence? What measures will be taken to forestall this and boost voter confidence? Our next chairman, Mahmoud Yakobo, has assured that elections will hold. Let's listen to what he said weeks ago. The commission is not contemplating any adjustment to the election timetable, let alone postponement of the general election. For the avoidance of doubt, the presidential election and the national assembly elections will hold on Saturday, 25th February 2023, while governorship and state assembly elections will hold two weeks later on Saturday, 11th March 2023. The repeated assurance by the security agencies for the adequate protection of personnel, materials, and processes also reinforces our determination to proceed. The 2023 general election will hold as scheduled. Any report to the contrary is not the official position of the Commission. Well, just recently, he took the message to Chatham House in London, telling the international community about plans for the elections and credibility issues which many are concerned about. The expectations place a great responsibility on the election management body, the Independent National Electoral Commission. We are not taking these responsibilities lightly. We appreciate that there are challenges and concerns but we also realize that there is enormous goodwill and support, both in Nigeria and beyond. Consequently, we believe that by forthrightly sharing our experiences and discussing the challenges openly, we can surmount the challenges and ensure that our elections in Nigeria continue to get better. May I, on this note, once again reiterate our position that the Commission is not contemplating, let alone planning, to postpone the 2023 general election. We are going ahead to conduct the election as scheduled. I think Chairman Professor Yakub Mahmoud there saying that, well, the election timetable is sacrosanct. I'm being joined live from our studios in Abuja by the Executive Director of the Center for Democracy and Development, Idiyat Asen. Ms. Asen, thanks for your time today. Thank you very much for having me. First things first, as we count down to an election that is just 30 days away, how ready do you think Nigerians are to exercise the right to vote? I think there is a lot of excitement in the polity. Nigerians are ready and willing to vote and because this vote is actually important for different people depending on the part of the country that you are thinking of. For some, it's a change. It represents the opportunity to make a cut from the past and positive things to come. And for some, it even represents the ability to change a government. So it represents so much for people and even the option for peace and, peace and development, uh, whichever way you look at it. So it's a positive one and there are Nigerians are really excited going back to the polls once again. So INEC released an updated voter register weeks ago showing that there are at least 93 million registered voters. That's some 9.5 million more than what we had four years ago. There's one thing to have this figure. The turnout during election is a totally different thing. Are you optimistic that the 35% turnout benchmark of previous elections will be surpassed this time? I think I'm very, I'm cautiously optimistic. And I believe that maintaining that 35, 36% will actually be a positive, considering a lot of factors that might actually ensure people do not go to the polls to vote during the elections. Uh, you see, there are lots of fears, palpable fears of possible violence on election day. And we know that this is a factor that prevents people from assessing the poll. It's also important to put that the failure of democracy to deliver development to the people also ensures that the, the will to vote 
is missing most times because the question is that why stay under the scorching sun for five, six hours and in the next four years democracy delivers nothing to you? Then the third factor will depend on how seamless, seamless the exercise is. When people go to the polls and within f two minutes, five minutes, they are able to exercise their franchise and they go back to their home. It is okay thing to do. But by the time they stay for two hours, three hours, four hours, there is a fatigue where maybe women will have to go back home, sit to take care of their children or do the course aside other people who also want to work and make money during polling. Well, we have the Bible, the voter accreditation system now that promises a seamless accreditation and voting uh, uh, process. But we'll talk about that very shortly. Let us talk about voter awareness and how much of voter education you've seen play out uh, in the days ahead of this election and what role you see it playing in convincing eligible persons to come out and cast their ballots on election day. I think the most important thing here is to ensure voters turn up at their polling unit so that we can have at least a reasonable turnout remaining at that 35 percent or bigger because of the threat or the fear of violence. But in terms of civic education or voter education, a lot is actually being done and for the first time it's not just the civil society that is leading it. Because of the interest of the generation of young people, they are also driving voter awareness online and offline. This election is like a referendum or what many will even put as a make or mark for people. So people are also putting their own destiny in their own hands and they are speaking to candidates, they are speaking to their family, they are speaking to their friends, they are encouraging them not just to register to vote, pick up their PVC and vote based on some certain preferences. It's also important to note that because of the nature of the, of the politics, the contest itself, where you have ethnicity, religion, and generation as defining identity, this is driving a lot of awareness on either of this side, good or bad, and encouraging people to want to vote in people. Indeed. Hanek has introduced what he calls a game changer, the beavers. How much impact do you see this having on the credibility of the process? And uh, particularly relative to what you have witnessed in the previously conducted off-cycle elections where this technology was used? I think the uh, off-cycle elections and the use of the BVAS and the IREF actually improve voters' confidence in the electoral system. You see the young people, everybody is just like, oh, elections have gotten better in Nigeria. The, co the trust quotient is improved. And the BVAS, of course, is a positive because you are talking of, a, of an accreditation system that doesn't just use your card, but takes hold of your biometrics. So it's not just your fingerprints, but your facials, your irises. All these go through the machine, which means that if you are not the old legitimate owner of that card, you cannot vote in that election. So it's a positive, it's a game changer, if properly utilized. Uh, itself. So we are all excited about it, but while also cautiously optimistic that for every technology there will be a backup plan. So it will be the voter education in that direction where we would be telling people that even in the case of malfunctioning, there would be a replacement of the beavers. And if there are challenges, people can come back to the poll either the following day to exercise their franchise. Anek Chairman has repeatedly confirmed the Commission's readiness for this election. We've talked about early funding, the fact that the Electoral Act was passed earlier. You've heard Mr. President said it's provided, it's provided everything that this Commission needs for the election. But your organization works very closely with INEC. From your observations, how prepared really would you say INEC is? I think for these elections, every partner and Nigerian do have a feeling that INEC is better prepared compared to previous elections. And this election is not one we should even be talking about postponements because if you look at the last three electoral circles, 
we had actually postponed elections. In 2011, in the midst of the polls, in the middle of the poll, election was postponed. In 2015, election was postponed for six weeks to restore security back to the size of the country, held to be the size of Belgium. In 2019, just on the eve of the elections, elections was once again postponed. This has a way of diminishing citizens' trust in the, elect in the election itself and democracy in, co uh, in correlation. It also depresses turnout during elections. So it's not in anybody's favor to postpone these elections. And when you even look at the long stretch of this uh, campaign, it has cost the politicians a huge amount of money. If you postpone the elections again, some of them will actually be short of cash. So it's not. So one month is enough if there is adequate political will to restore security in all parts of the country for these elections to hold. And when you look at what INEC has been doing and telling us, at least they would have been able to reach at least 11 out of the 14 activities they have on their electoral calendar. So this beholds on INEC and of course the government as well as us citizens, because an ele election is a stakeholder's affair. It's not just the responsibility of the election management system. What are we doing in our little corner to ensure that these elections goes on to imbue trust in cities, in citizens' trust in this whole democratic process? What are you and the Center for Democracy and Development saying to the candidates? We've seen the rhetoric at its worst. And, of course, the battle to gain votes from all parties. I'm sure you're following the latest uh, dramatic turn of events. Yeah, I think for us, it's, it's really our, our messaging in all electoral circles has been issue-based politics. Like, how do you promote it? But what is important is that these candidates must remember that they need a country to rule over when they emerge the winner. If things continue like this, the bifurcation, which is already very wide along ethnic, religious line and intergenerational, will go bigger. And if there is no Nigeria, or if there is no safe, secure Nigeria where there is national cohesion, anybody that emerges winner will find it very difficult to rule. Will it be in their favor to use one year trying to address national cohesion without getting down to, do, to the business of governance? Indeed. So INEC is calling this election for the youth. Voters between the age of 18 and 34 constitute 39.6% of the voting population. It's the highest in the voter distribution. If you add that to 18 to 49, they're about, that's over 70% of registered voters. Well, it's not necessarily different from what we had in 2019 when the figure total up to close to 80% when you add it up between 18 to 50 years. But what's the significance of this for this coming election? This is a youth elections. Any increased turnout on the part of the youth will actually benefit any of the candidates that they actually choose. And the fact that the youth themselves are also desirous of actually making change, of actually exercising their newfound power, it's important for these elections. The only thing we can hope is that on the day of the elections, this demography, which constitutes the largest on the voters' roll, would turn out and exercise their franchise. Ideyat Hassan, Executive Director, Center for Democracy and Development, thank you for talking to us on the program tonight. Thank you very much for having me. And just before we go, remember your PVC is your passport to vote on election day. Without it, you can't go to a polling center on the 25th of February and the 11th of March. We'll be back same time tomorrow with all the updates and analysis you need to know ahead of this election. I am Nifem Yogun Thank you for joining us.